part of uh, this uh, this session today. So I will be uh, doing this broadcast live from uh, Sha'alam and the Blue Mosque. Uh, we call Mazinegari Sha'alam. So especially our uh, our brothers and sisters from Pakistan, welcome. And this program is jointly organized by uh, Masjid Sultan uh, Salahuddin Sa, Masjid Blue Mosque, that we, we, we regard it as a Blue Mosque, and PIM, uh, or Islam, My Islamic Information Center, uh, in Shalam, as well as Islamic Outreach Abim Center, and Masjid Tour Guide Program, and also our, our uh, Also, our, our partner in Pakistan, International Institute of Islamic, uh, Islamic, uh, International uh, Institute of Islamic uh, Info, uh, Study, uh, Islamic Learning, IIL, Pakistan. So, welcome. And we are getting a little bit late because of the, the timing for the uh, Maghrib prayers. So, the timing for the Maghrib prayers, it, it, came a little bit uh, late. So as we expected, it was supposed to be in by uh, 7.20, uh, but it took like almost 7.35. So we are getting ready and getting up to welcome everyone who are, uh, who are invited and who came in person to this event. So please uh, be patient and inshallah, we will, uh, we will uh, listen to our uh, uh, start from Japan on the topic and our speakers and all the others invited uh, guests to uh, join join this session uh, inshallah thank you thank you for everyone for joining this session and please uh, write in the into the in the comment if you are unable to see the screen or you are unable to listen to the voice okay now i'm i'm speaking from the uh, backstage so Probably the voice is okay, but later on when the speaker will be speaking, if any technical difficulties, please uh, let me know so I can uh, ratify it and can uh, conduct the program as smooth as possible. Jazakallahu khair. We will be waiting for our speakers and uh, guests to arrive and start the program. Thank you so much. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless our program and our efforts. وبشرح لي صدري ويسر لي أمري وحل الأقدة من لساني يفقه قولي أما بعد السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته كونيجوا كمباوا Ladies and gentlemen we just have 10 minutes before we pause for the azan so whilst before the presentation by Haj Koichiro Sugimoto-san. I will just highlight some preparation and also we'll invite the brother who would be reading the Ayat Quran, inshallah ta'ala. First and foremost, I welcome you. Selamat datang ahlan wa sahlan. Marhaban bikum to come for this unique session. Uh, and I also like to welcome our honored guest uh, who is uh, here today, inshallah ta'ala. I will also acknowledge first the presence of Yang Berbahagia Puan Hafizul Akmal, Dedi Abu Jalil. She is the registration uh, for Mu'allaf and the development for PIBK from MAIS, Majlis Agama Islam Selangor. Uh, She's present on the hall. Thank you, Puan. And I know you're, this is a time for you to rest with the family, but Alhamdulillah, your presence is, is great. Uh, not sure whether Yang Berbahagia, uh, Tuan Haji Aizan bin Tukiman, also tua, Ketua Pengarah Islamic Outreach Center. Yang Berbahagia, Sister Norma Sulaiman, Program Director, Masjid Tua Guide Program, IOAC. So, on behalf of the committee member also, I welcome all of you to this unique session and in particular, our honored guest, Haj Koichiro Sugimoto-san. Of course, I have a very uh, 
good relation and I call him Pak Sugimoto because he's married to an Indonesian. So tempe and lontong is no strange stranger for him. So inshallah, <laughs> you can invite him if you have the time. So our program will consist of, we will have the Quran recitation uh, shortly. We will pause for Azan and then I will invite Haj uh, Sugimoto san to deliver his presentation, inshallah. And before, it will take around one hour. So he has his presentation slide. Those are in Zoom. I know he's uh, also video taping the session so that then he will then be able to post in the YouTube for the benefit of others. Because he admit, and I also admit that if you search in the internet, this topic is not available. There are some research about it. So, but lecture-wise, and he had just uh, prepared the session. Then. So, this program is organized in conjunction with Maiz and direct, uh, coordinated by Islamic Outreach Abim. And for many of you who may not know, Islamic Outreach Abim uh, has been set up in 1987 as the Masjid Tour Guide Program, Shahada Program including for the aboriginals, the orang asli, and classes for reverts by the volunteers then. So tonight, inshallah, uh, we will hope that you can support the donation drive for both uh, IOAC as well as also the project that uh, Sugimoto-san will be announcing uh, to all of us with regards to the Quran project then. I wouldn't take more time than inshallah. I like to call uh, brother Muhammad uh, Ali Saleh from Al Madina International University to recite the ayat in Quran. Then, what a fadl mashkuro ya akhil karim. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Uh, unfortunately, because of the time constraints, we won't go into much of reading. I'm going to just read the shortest surah that the most important surah for us as Muslims. This is what I ask them. Uh, as Muslims, we have organized our time around the prayer time because immediately the prayer time will go and then have to start, you know, Jiam penazan dulu, no. Aku bilah ibu nasi tuan rajim. Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Walas inna insan lah fi khus. Illa aladina amanu wa amilu swalihat wa tawasu bil haq wa tawasu bil sabr. Um, translation. By time, indeed, mankind is in loss. Except for those who have believed and done righteous deeds and advised each other to truth and advised each other to patience. I've done this purposely because our Imam Shafi, for those uh, Shafi's, he said if the, the old Quran wasn't revealed, this surah was enough for us. It teaches us righteousness and patience, and those are the only things that we need in our deed. We are Ummat and Wasata, no extremism in anything. So Alhamdulillah, we are glad to have the Prophet who brought us this religion. So we have to be the best Ummah because our best example is the Prophet I'm not here for a talk. Shukran Zakhullah Khair. Zakhullah Khair, Brother Saleh, Ali Saleh, for that. Keep it short, straightforward, but although it's short, but it's heavy. Heavy for us to apply it. MashaAllah, Jazakallah khair again, brother. Uh, it's important for us to feel connected with the Quran. There is four more minutes. I'm going to take that time so that then immediately after Azan, uh, brother Sugimoto san can start away. But I think it's good for us to know at least who is our speaker tonight. Betul, Pak? <laughs> 
he asked me whether I, he should deliver this speech in English, in Japanese, or in Bahasa. I said Bahasa, I worry we don't understand. Japanese, we, we will not understand either. So I said speak to English, but in view of the presence of some Japanese reverts or sisters or brothers, can you raise your hand if you are Japanese? Okay, so we have several of them. So I leave it to you whether you want to summarize as you go along in the session. So Sugimoto-san, as you know, he's from uh, Se uh, Seki City, Gifu Prefecture. The thing is he found Islam not through conferences. He found Islam in 1996 after his trip in Bangladesh. And I think that is Islam in action through the kindness of the people uh, in Bangladesh, positive attitude. And for people who live under poverty, the maskin, and yet they are rich in their akhlaq and also offering what they can offer despite living in under poverty. And this is the optimistic characteristic of the people who move Sugimoto's heart. And this is why he found the reason why people have been so much, so positive. And people are there in believing in Allah and firm in the religion. So uh, he mentioned here that he is impressed by the Quran that gives a clear concept about Allah. You check Quran, uh, Surah 28, Ayat 88 as your homework that caused Pasugimoto a strong impact. And therefore, 1997, he answered the call, accepted Islam, is active in spreading Islam teaching in Japan, giving lecture for Muslim and non-Muslim. He is now the president of Islamic Research Foundation International in Japan, the chairman of Chiba Islamic Cultural Center, CICC, and also the global outreach specialist for Islamic Education Research Academy, which is AIRA in United Kingdom. For the most, he had his master degree from Kobe University and now an alumni in Institute, Institute of Education from IIUM, and he's pursuing his PhD also in IIUM. Then, so one of the things that Pak Sugi is very passionate about is dream that the Quran will be available in every home in Japan. First, we also have to make sure every Quran is in the house of Malaysian, in Malaysia. <laughs> so we will sync his intention with our Nawaitu. So we need to have that also. If you live in any of the neighborhood, everyone, inshallah, must have Quran, Muslim or non-Muslim. I, I know one brother, he, when he conducts training, he gave Quran to everyone. Because he said, I'm not trying to convert you, but I'm trying to say that this is the most amazing, spectacular book that contains knowledge that if you live in this planet, you must read it. Let's pause for the question. Anda will take the advantage of the long period of Isha time and, and incorporate this with the zikr of Allah and also deepening our understanding. On the lighter side, Sugimoto san is only in the mid 40s, so, so much younger than me. Um, I know I did not introduce myself. My name is Ahmad Fakhri bin Hamza. I am just a brother and enjoy helping uh, 
IOAC in their program and meeting with some of our brothers who contributing back uh, to Islam. Pasugi is married, as I said earlier, with three boys, teenage boys, uh, alhamdulillah. And I think we can learn a lot from him, from his insight, from the depth of his understanding. We chose this topic because this topic is a lot of interest amongst the Malaysian, especially when Malaysian is so affiliated with the culture and also the uh, things happening in Japan. They have opened their doors and many of us are now getting ready to go for the Sakura festival, I suppose, in March and April. But it's good now that this topic is being surfaced for you now to have uh, an, an understanding about the matter. But I think more importantly, I want all of us to reflect from the lecture is whether how do we interact with traditions and culture from our own Malaysian, uh, Malay, or whatever uh, the, um, ethnicity or background you are, so that then you have a better application of Islam then. The floor is yours. Over to you then. Alhamdulillah, <laughs> Alhamdulillah, the first and foremost praise to be to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Ashad Allah ilaha illallah wa ashad anna Muhammad sallallahu I bear witness that there is none worthy of worship but Allah. And I bear witness that the Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is a message of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So first I would like to I show my gratitude to the Mice and Abin uh, Outreach, Outreach Center uh, to give me this opportunity to present. Uh, that is something very unique. I also appreciate your attendance, alhamdulillah, although probably some of you came from a long way and through the traffic jam, alhamdulillah. The purpose of this uh, session, this brief session, is basically to share my knowledge, I mean, the sharing my findings. For the last probably a couple of years of my research on Shintoism and Islam, it is not easy topic actually to deal with. And most of us probably think that the, what is the relationship, is there any link, is there any organic relationship between Shintoism and Islam? Because Shintoism is not the part of Ahlul Kitab, not the people of the book. However, Alhamdulillah, with the guidance of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, I, I found something significant. And just yes, I'd like to share with you. And this is all that much more uh, intellectual uh, session. I just had to open the door uh, for your any questions after this. And the second purpose is to build a relationship with all of you uh, because um, this is, I believe, this is just the beginning of our meeting. Most of us, we meet first time. So I'd like to uh, com communicate with you, if you like, to build a relationship, especially as I uh, see talk about the Kurwa project, so we can continue the investment for the future, and that is Akhira. So nothing but we're focusing on the investment for Akhira. So um, let me start 
my presentation. So just about one hour. So the title of my uh, speech is Unknown Relationship Between Shintoism and Islam. So first, let me quote one ayah of the Quran, which actually impacted me before investing Islam. A'udhu billahi min ash-shaytani rajim, bismillahi rahman rahim, ya ayyuhal nas, inna kharakunakum min dhakarin wa untha, wa ja'alunakum shu'uban wa kaba ila ita'arakum, inna akramakum inda allahi akhaqum, inna allaha alimul khabir. O oh mankind, indeed, we have created you from male and female and made you peoples and the tribes that you may know one another. Indeed, the most noble of you in the sight of Allah is the most righteous of you, those who have taqwa. Indeed, Allah is knowing and acquainted. Quran chapter 49, verse 13. And this is our quotation that from the, the professor, Dr. Tariq Ramadan, he mentioned that knowing the other is the process that is unavoidable if fear of difference is to be overcome and mutual respect is to be attained. So human beings live a test that they can and they must master by making the effort to know and recognize those who are not of their tribe, their country, their race, their religion. So dialogue, particularly interreligious dialogue, is indispensable. So let me introduce the brief, just overview the picture uh, of the religious populations in Japan. The data is uh, 2020. So majority of them, they are Shintos, Shintoists. It's about 88 million people out of 126 million. Also, somewhat similar, about 84 million populations. And 202 million Christianity, Christians, and about 7 million others. And Islam, the Muslims, about 200,000. Yeah, of course, it's super minority in Japan. However, it's a growing. Alhamdulillah, recently we observed that comparing uh, when I invested Islam in Japan just 25 years ago, it was just only two, three masjid. But today we have 150 or more masjid. And if you include the masala, the smaller prayer rooms is more, Alhamdulillah. So the grow, growing ratio is very high, more, more than over 500% for the last 30 or 35 years. So the question here I pose, uh, according to the statistics of the uh, Agency of Culture Affairs, it says that total religious population is 180 million. However, um, total population, actual population in Japan is 126 million. Why there is a gap? About 55 million is overlapping. So why this uh, gap exists? Do you have any idea? Yes, yeah, exactly, exactly. Thank you very much. So here we have now some professors and lecturers in the university, alhamdulillah. So because of this uh, so-called uh, Shinbutsu Shugo, which means the shin synthesis of the Shintoism and the Buddhism. So for example, the Shinto gods are available in temples. And the Buddhist uh, statues available in Sh Shinto shrines. So they are so-called amalgamation of religions or synthesis. So it has a certain, it represents a certain character nature of the Japanese people. And we will understand why they, it's possible to mix like this. Probably from the Islam point of view, it's not possible. But from Japanese point of view, it's possible. And we understand why it's possible. Later on, we will know the answer. So there are a lot of letters because I want to make sure that I will not really be misleading and make sure that uh, the findings is clearly delivered to you. 
So uh, in the in the Muqaddima, in the introduction, the many Japanese people have a general image of Islam as a strict monotheistic religion, and uh, to a certain extent as a scary religion linked to terrorism because of media. So for example, it is often said in Japan that uh, the Shintoism, a polytheistic religion that believes in million gods is accepting peaceful because it, it believes in many gods. So it's kind of like a tolerance. So while Islam, which in limits the number of gods to one, is exclusive and extreme, that is a logic, the logic of the Jap non Japanese non-Muslim, how they think, the way they think. However, Islam has a worldview of the only one creator and a wide variety of creations. So in particular, the concept of jinn or the spirits or demons or evil spirits is similar to that of Shintoism uh, in Japan. So according to the Jinja Honcho, the Association of Shin, uh, Shinto Shrines, uh, it defines the, the what is Shinto. So it says that Shinto is the indigenous face of the Japanese. It is a way of life and way of thinking that has been an integral part of Japanese culture since ancient times. So it is a foundation for the yearly life cycles, beginning with the New Year days, visit Japanese faith to a Shinto shrine to wish for good luck. But, uh, <clears throat> observing the Shinto faith means uh, worshiping ancestors as guardians of the family. It also means showing respect of the medial kami. So kami is a word that corresponds to the deity in English. So residing in the natural world. So it's a more um, animistic uh, belief. And there are kami of mountains and kami of the sea. So kami are all around us. That is what they believe. Everything and every person. They may be worshipped anywhere, but many people build Shinto shrines and they call jinja, and they cleansing their hands and the mouth at the entrance to purify the body and mind. So generally speaking, the Shinto is, Shintoism is uh, animism, animism. Yeah? So they be, believe that uh, the God is everywhere. That is a kind of uh, uh, the brief uh, summary of the Shinto. So just to introduce the basic concept of uh, Chinese character kanji, we call it, the God in Japanese language. So this one word has several readings in Japan, Japanese character kanji. For example, this God uh, can be read as kami, can also be read as jin or shi. So jinja means a Shinto shrine. So, and then this is read as jin. And monotheism, is called the Ishinkyo. So this kami is called as Shin. And the polytheism is Tashinkyo. This also, uh, this kanji uh, represents Shin. So this is a, the, the major concept, an important term to understand the, to compare the, the gods uh, between these two religions. So interesting part is that uh, when it comes to the reading of this kami, this kami has also the reading of jin. So actually we are dealing with jin. It, it, it is uh, by accident or with Allah's uh, the hikmah. In, in Islam, we call so jin is a supernatural spirit. We also call jin. And then simultaneously, this kanji also can be read as jin. So in, in, in short, this is the, the findings. So when it comes to the God in Islam, it actually indicates Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. However, in Shintoism, God indicates the chi. So although we are using the same character, kami, but indicating completely different. So that's why uh, confusing part, if we use this kanji, the God or kami, that we are not sure which kami you are talking about. You are talking about Allah or Jin. That's why uh, it is safe to use Allah if you're indicating our God. And then for the, for the Japanese people, because they are, they are talking about actually the Jin. So that is the confu confusing part. And we have to make clear when it comes to discussion 
or Dawa to non Muslim Japanese. So let me explain how it is uh, this jin is actually their god in Shintoism. So the nature of many gods in Shintoism, the Islam is the most mystic religion in which Allah is the only God to be worshipped. However, Muslims also believe in the existence of mysterious spiritual beings called jinn, because jinn are often mentioned in the Quran and the Hadith. For example, title chapter 72 of the Quran is called al -Jin. And Mr. Takeshi Umehara, Japanese philosopher says, I believe that polytheism arose when humans who originally lived in the forest, saw the various living things in the forest, something mysterious and beyond the power of humans, therefore worship them. So of course, the Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala prohibits human worship of mysterious spiritual beings or jinn, because jinn are also Allah's creation. So Quran chapter 51, verse 56 says, Bama kharaktur jinn wa insa illa riyabulum. So I created jinn and mankind to serve me, Allah. So the reality of the jinn is clearly recognized in the Quran, but most of the Japanese people do not know about it. So that's why we need to inform uh, this, this reality. So knowing that other is a process that is unavoidable if the fear of difference to be overcome and the mutual respect is to be attained. So this unknown relationship uh, should be informed to the Japanese people. So Alhamdulillah, this uh, presentation will be published in Japanese language uh, in the, one of the journals uh, we call the Religious Issues, uh, published in Tokyo, inshallah, by the end of this month, inshallah. So it will be shared. So before the publication, you will receive uh, the brief nutshell of these uh, papers. So characteristics of jinn, maybe most of you know, but let me just clarify it. So what uh, kind of beings are jinn? The first, they are basically invisible to human eyes, and they are like powerful spiritual energy, and they are good jinn and bad jinn. And the bad jinn deceive or threaten humans to cause damage or harms. They can transform into humans, animals, plants, and so on. They are considered to be the characteristics of jinn. So according to Arabic dictionary, the word jinn is derived from the Arabic word janna, meaning to hide or to conceal. Jinn are so called because they hide or conceal themselves from the people's eyes. So jinn is a powerful spiritual energy and created before the birth of the mankind and having its origin in smokeless fire. For example, jinn is generally like jinni, it's like Aladdin. And then if the jinn is evil, we call it shaitan or iblis or de devil. And if it is worse than that, it is called a nabi. And it is worse than that, and more powerful, it is called a ifrit. For example, the story of ifrit teleporting the throne of Queen Saba in response to Suleiman's request, a prophet Suleiman's request is recorded in the Quran. So this is the Hadith, uh, Abu al-Malik uh, reported on the authority of a man, I was riding on a mound behind the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, may blessing peace be upon him, it stumbled. Thereupon I said, may shaitan the devil perish. So he said, do not say, the Prophet said, do not say that, may the devil perish. For you say that, that he will swell so much so that he will be like a house and say, by my power, but say, Bismillah, in the name of Allah. For when you say that, he will diminish so, so much so that he will be like a fly. So the human being, we cannot uh, kill or destroy the, the shaitan. If we try to do that, shaitan becomes very powerful and against you. It's very dangerous. Even enter you, you will possess. It's very dangerous. So we not try to do that. So that's why Muhammad Sarasa advice, just say Bismillah. In front of Allah, the power of shaitan is nothing. With the power of Allah. So that's why just say simply Bismillah. So this shaitan becomes a sign of the fly. So become very meaningless, I mean, far less. So that is the, the kind of thing that uh, uh, the relationship uh, with the jinn from the Islam perspective. 
So gene can change their homes into a variety of things, including humans, animals, and plants, and live in a variety of places. According to the biography of the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu the Sira, in the seventh century, the Christ polytheist, the Mishri, held a meeting over the treatment of Muhammad at the Dar al Nadwa uh, to prevent the Muslims from treat, uh, expanding their power. So, because of the second Aqaba, so that the 75 people came from Medina and then they pledged and officially invited Muhammad Sallallahu to come to Medina. So, the Mo Me Me Meccan, the police, they are threatened. They are so much threatened. So they make another word, a meeting, and then they decided to murder, right? So it is recorded that Iblis, an evil jinn, and the demon appeared that at a meeting in the form of dignified elderly man wearing a black cloak. In other words, the jinn could change into human form. According to Muslim scholars, some jinns are considered to eat, drink, have men and women, marry, bear children, kill each other, and die just like humans. So Abu Tharaba al Shaini al traced to the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam may blessing and peace be upon him, the saying that the jinn are of three classes. So one which have wings and fly in air, and the one which consists of snakes and dogs, and one which stay in places and travel about. So he categorized this jinn in the three forms, and one of the forms uh, is the snakes and dogs. So this is a linkage we can find in the Shintori. The so jinn live in the different places, villages, mountains, and the bays are the most common places where the jinn stay. And on the other hand, the places that the jinn often visit and sometimes use as places of residence are the sea or river, markets, rooftops, landfills, and, and, and the toilets and the tombs. So apart from these places, they also like to be quiet places such as valleys, deserts, and the rocks and so on. So let me introduce first the Jin and the Japanese snake worship. Snakes are symbols of renewal and regeneration. A Jin can become a snake. Uh, Dr. Yuko Yoshino, a Japanese ethnographer or ethnologist, uh, points out that her book, Snakes, Snake Worship in Japan, that it is clear fact that the ancient Japanese people have worshipped snakes since the Jomon period. The snake was not a message of God, but the body of the gods, and the snake itself was a god. In other words, the ancient Japanese people who worshipped snakes were very interested in shedding of the snake as a means of bringing about renewal and the regeneration of life. So you can see the shedding of the snake, they change the, the skins, their skins from time to time. So Japanese people, when they look at them, so they feel that this is a kind of the symbolic symbol of regeneration or renewal. So they wish they can be like that. And the Nagas, Nagas is a Naga, is a, is a means uh, snake in Hinduism, maybe the origin of snake worship in Shintoism. Shimenawa, Shimenawa is a sacred rope is a symbol of snake worship in Shintoism. Shimenawa is a shape of snake or dragon, is attached to Tori, Tori means gate of shrines all over Japan. For example, ha, uh, Hakuryu Shrine in Miyazaki Prefecture in Kyushu believe that there is a living white snakes in the shrine and that, that uh, Shimenawa originates from the image of baking white snakes. Shimenawa also uh, symbolic in so-called the uh, Izumo Taisha Shrine, the one of the oldest shrines and the most famous shrine in Japan. In Shimane Prefecture is also famous for its large, or I could say largest Shimenawa in Japan. According to Mr. Kenichi Tanigawa, a Japanese ethnologist, uh, Izumo Taisha Shrine is still holds the annual festival called the Dragon Snake Festival as a part of Kami Ari festival. So you can see the picture of this, uh, the main, uh, the building of the worship. Huge, there's a huge, because Shimenawa is a rope. It's a symbolic, uh, the rope of the mating of two snakes. And in fact, when you look at the right side, the sacred tablet of dragon snake god. 
So they, they, they take this, the symbolic, this uh, tablet, and then to take their home and then to worship this uh, tablet. And she could clearly uh, this uh, the, the image of snake are located. Many Siddha trees are located in Shinto shrines and they are symbols of the body of snake. Sh uh, Shimenawa is wrapped around the trees because they are considered sacred. So not directly worshiping the snake itself, but they see the so many, the natural things as a symbolic a symbols of snake. So they see the tree, cedar trees especially, as a body of snake. And around, they wrap uh, the, the Shimenawa again. At Okusawa Shrine in Tokyo and the Kumano Shrine in Saitama Prefecture, Shimenawa resembling a snake with a perfect head, a perfect snake head is wrapped around the Tori gate. So it is more clear that uh, now they are keep still the, the snake head with Shimenawa. This also somewhat similar at the uh, uh, Oisugi Shrine in Shiga Prefecture and other shrines, a Shimehiki or through snakes, which resemble snakes with uh, perfect snake heads, are uh, wrapped around the Tori Gate. So uh, uh, Shirahata uh, Hachiman, Hachiman Daiji Shrine in Kanagawa Prefecture, uh, Hachimanko means a snake festival is held every year in March till now. And the Storo Snake is dedicated to the gate to pray for the fertility of the region. So the people still wish and then uh, hope for this snake to bring uh, this fertility of, for the region. Uh, so even today, the, every June 30th, the Shinto ritual called the Nagoshi no Oharae is held in shrines throughout Japan. So although not the Shimenawa, it is said that by passing through this Chinoa, this ring is called a Chinoa, a thatched ring that resembles a snake body. People purge themselves of sins and injuries and they pray for good health and good fortune. The origin, origin of this ritual it is believed to be the ancient Japanese who had a strong belief in snakes and who wished for the renewal of life and the rebirth by symbolizing the shedding of the snake skin. So by passing through this ring, they feel that the evil human beings are doing shedding, like they're changing their skins and then their renewal and regeneration. So another example, they are said that there are said to be more than 2,000 shrines affiliated with the Kompira Shrine in Kanagawa Prefecture, Kanagawa Prefecture known as the Kompira san throughout Japan. Its deity is deity Omono Kun, uh, Omono Onushi, the snake god. According to uh, Kotoryo, the chief priest of the Kompia Shrine, the Mount Kotohira, the site has long been revered by the people as sacred mount, a sacred mountain where the snake god or dragon god resides. Besides, and according to one theory, the mountain itself is said to be a god. So they see the shape of mountain is symbolizing the shape of snake. So that's why they wash this mountain. Nature of Kami of Mountains in Sakurai City, Nara Prefecture, there is a cone shaped Mount Miwa. According to the Omiwa Shrine located at, at the root of the mountain, the coiled snake body, the coiled snake body is a one of the forms in which uh, Omono Nushi no, kami, no Okami is manifested. According to the legend of Mr. Mount Nantai, the Tochigi Prefecture designated cultural property, originally the snake was the object of worship, but Mount Mo, uh, Nantai, which looks like a coiled snake, became the object of worship later. So even this, the shape of a uh, mountain is resembles the shape of the coiled snake. Now, Great Snake Festival near Mount Nantai in Tochigi Prefecture. It may surprise you, but this is every year it's happening. So, Senjoga, Senjogahara Field, located at the root of the Mount Nantai, it is said that a long time ago, the god transformed into snake and the centipede and the fort with them. Even today, Great Snake Festival is held every year at the nearby 
uh, origami onsen, the hot springs. So when you look at this photo, the, the left photo, actually they are pulling this, uh, carrying this snake model from the jinja, from the shrine, Shinto shrine, from the inside. And then they will carry throughout all the like village or town. This is another example. In Sekikawa village in Niigata prefecture, there is a legend called the Ori uh, Toge, Ori Pass. In this legend, the local people believe that a big snake tried to stop the giant, a great flood of rivers. And today they wish for the snake to prevent the village from the floods again and they make a festival every year. So this is actually Guinness record, it is 83 meter long. So they make uh, from the screw and the bamboo. And then they are carrying and then they are walking throughout the village. Isejingu in prefecture is also one of the most authentic and famous shrines in Japan. In shrine Amaterasu at Naibu or the Imperial Grand Shrine, Mr. Nobuzane Tsukushi, a Japanese ethnologist, has stated clearly in his book that Amaterasu was a snake. Mr. Giichiro Nishino, who specializes in the ancient history of Isejingu Shrine, also states in his book. Ancient Japan and Isejingu Shrine, the deity of the Imperial Grand Shrine, that is Amaterasu Omikami, is a snake. And the Sayo uh, is his con consort, is a wife. And that is why Amaterasu goes to Saigu every night to get married. And every morning, the scales of the Kuchinawa, means a snake, fall from the Saigu's bed. So it is written in the books. Uh, this is a picture of the uh, Isejingu. In the river Isuzu, near to Isejingu, that flows through the palace area of the Imperial Grand Shrine, Takimatsuri no Kami is still enshrined as a river god, a water god. It's associated with the god of snake. The snake of the river snake body is regarded as the avatar of the dragon snake god. So when you look at this right side photo, this is the blue color is a river. So always, even the, probably in the Egypt, in the India, the Gandhis, they associate the shape of river as a, as a snake, and then they wash it. They feel some spiritual power there, and they wash their body in the river, and then they think they can purify from sins and impurities. Japanese also the think the same way. So there is no shrine pavilion there, but only one stone platform inside the shrine wall with a mountain-shaped stone placed in the center of the platform. The stone symbolizes a coil shape of snake. So what we have actually inside this shrine is just this stone, just this only mountain-sized stone inside, only this one stone located. So what is this? This is as, as if this represents, symbolize a coil snake. Now it's Kushima Shrine. This is a world heritage in Japan, and the Suiko Emperor a dynasty, there was a face of dragon or snake. Today, they say that they worship the Ichikishima no Hime no Mikoto as the first god to be worshipped. When we look at the history, so actually the Itsukushima uh, Shrine, and this is in Hiroshima Prefecture, actually they have a, a Saravasi face. So this professor Teruaki Matsui in the Hiroshima Prefecture of University said there was a dragon king faced to assume an enshrined deity, a dragon woman for a long time. It's Kushima shrine that this received the surge of the Fukujin face uh, after the latter period in the Muromachi area and they switched it to Saravati face, a Saraswati face to the present happy, to, to grant happiness and prosperity. So what is a Saraswati face? So the concept of Saraswati mig migrated from India through China to Japan, where she appears as Benzai Ten. Worship of Benzai Ten arrived in Japan during six through eight century, centuries. So she is often depicted holding a biwa, a traditional Japanese musical instrument. She is enshrined on numerous locations throughout Japan during the medieval period onwards. Benzai Ten came to be associated or even conflated with the number of Buddhist 
and local deities. Uh, this is a part of amalgamation we call between Shintoism and Buddhism. Eventually became ascribed to Benzaite in popular belief, the snake god Ugajin and the Kami Ichiki no Shimahime. So due to her status as a water deity, she was also linked with the Nagas. You see the, the, the snake god in, in Hinduism, uh, dragons, dragons and the snakes in Hinduism. So this is a picture of the Benzaite in the left and the right side the Ugaji and the female form. So you see this, the, the snake body and with a human head. So next is the Inari Shrine. 30,000 Inari Shrine in Japan. This is the number one uh, uh, in Japan in number of shrines. So major in shrine deity in uh, Tsushimi Inari Shrine in Kyoto Prefecture is Uka or Uga in Uka no Mitama means a snake. In other words, Uka no Mitama is a god of the spirit of the snake. So we look at the previous uh, slide, this Ugaji, right? Uka. Uga means actually snake. Is a Uka is another pronunciation. So the central deity of this even Fushiminari Taisha is one of the most famous uh, shrines in Japan, uh, also a worship uh, snake. Uh, and then there is a transition between snake god to the fox god. And remember the one hadith said that Prophet Muhammad also exactly mentioned that jinn can take a form of snakes and the dogs. And then this fox uh, is under the category of dogs. According to uh, 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 Toyoguke Inari uh, Hongu, the snake god is older than fox god, worshipped at the uh, Fushimi Inari shrine. The Chinese theory of yin yang and the five elements influence the Chinese fox god to the Japanese snake god, so water god. So we look at this uh, sacred tablet, the right side. So it's in, at the center, you will see the snake. And at the bottom, you will see this fox. So there is a transition of the gods. And the fox and the fire at the Fushimi Inari Shrine and the Toyokawa Inari Shrine, there's a lot of fox statues here in Toyokawa Inari. And the, in the Inyan and the Five Elements philosophy, the fox is considered to belong to the earth ki, the spirit, and the five, a fire ki gives the birth to earth ki. So the fox and the fire are closely related. So why are they wearing this red clothes in front of them? This red actually represent the fire, fire key. According to the, the philosophy of the Chinese uh, yin yang and the five elements. So when you, when probably uh, many of you visit Japan probably and they saw the shrine color is a red, especially is Inari shrine, this gate is red, mera, right? So why this is red? Because based on this philosophy of yin yang, so which means this, the red color is a fire bring the earth. And the earth color is a soil. Soil color is a yellow. So the, the skin of fox is yellow. That's why they associated this fire will bring the fox and the fox will bring the crops, the rice crops, which color also yellow. So that's why they're wishing the fertility of the land and the festival uh, harvest. So this is another uh, uh, example. Uh, Mitsumine Shrine in Chichibu City, Saitan Prefecture, uh, Okuchi no Omagami, also known sacred god, is revered by the people. Okuchi no Magami is a, a deified form of the wolf or dog, the which is worshipped for its ability to receive the similar spiritual power of gods. So you will see this another sacred tablets uh, showing the, the shape of uh, dogs and even the statue of a uh, dog or wolf. So now coming to another aspect. So some of the genes are regarded like a humans. As those who eat, drink, marry their children, kill each other and they die. In the Kojiki recorded uh, ancient matters published in 712 AD, many gods commit evil and they die, marry and they bear children. For example, if we read the chapter 2, verse 20, uh, verse 30 in the Quran, uh, there is a scene where angels ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala why he put the people on earth who do evil and shed blood, like jinn. 
So genes have a propensity to do evil and they die. Likewise, Kojiki contains many instances of certain deities dying. For example, when the goddess uh, Izanami no Mikoto gave birth to uh, Hino Kagutsuchi no Mikoto and the god of fire, uh, she suffered severe burns on her private birth and lay sick and eventually died. So the god died. So according to Islamic teachings, uh, Jin marry and bear children. Um, similarly, according to the Kojiki, the god Izanami who married God Izanaki gave birth to many islands, then began to give birth to 8 million gods. For example, gods of sea, rivers, and water, wind, trees, mountains, the fields, soil, and the mist, and the valleys, ships, and the food. Susano no Mikoto, who vanquished Yama, Yamata no Orochi, the big snake, married uh, Kushinada Hime. Uh, he had one child with Kushinada Hime, two children with other daughters. And <clears throat> Suseribi Neme, daughter of Susano no Mikoto, took a marital vow with uh, Onamuchi no Kami. So uh, these uh, characters of Jin, according to the, the concept of God in Islam, the Allah's mother, of course, never marry and no eat, of course, no drink. And of course, uh, no die and then no, no kill each other, not like this. So it is more the characteristics of gene. So in summary, again, I just add the examples. So God in Islam indicates Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, but God in Shintoism actually indicates snake, dragon god, the fox or dog god, or eight million gods which are all uh, similar to the characteristics of the jinn. And the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam exactly mentioned in the Sahih Hadith that uh, this jinn can take the uh, forms of snakes and the dogs. So in conclusion, the lesson, the word God in the monotheistic religion of Islam, the word Kami in the polytheistic religion of Shintoism have the same kanji of Kami, but the former refers to Allah, the latter to Jin. So when we read texts related to the monotheism and polytheism, we need to first understand exactly what the God indicates. By doing so, we can avoid misconception that polytheism is accepting a peaceful, while Islam with its only one God is exclusive and dangerous. In Japanese Shintoism, deity refers to the Jin of Islam, and, and such as snake god, fox god, and dog god, and eight million gods, and so on. Islam re recognizes existence of jinn. Therefore, Islam and Shinto can coexist within the framework of Islam. Since both kami and the jinn exhibit supernatural abilities, the Japanese who did not have the Quran, the book of revelation, could not distinguish whether a certain supernatural phenomena was due to the power of God or the power of the jinn. So key verse of the Quran in Dawa for the Japanese people, just I want to uh, uh, quote in the chapter 22, verse 60, 67, it says, Likulli ja aluna man man nasi amu ila rabbik innakara hudan mustaqi. So that to every people, not Ahal al to every people have we appointed rites and ceremonies which they must follow. Let them not dispute with you on the matter, but do you, but do you invite them to your Lord, for you are assuredly on the right way. So this is, I, I believe, more relevant in the context, context of Japanese culture and for the Japanese people uh, to do dawa. We will not dispute what they believe. Uh, even they are believing in jinn or so. Because uh, our purpose basically is to convey the message of Islam clearly, which is written in the Quran or memorized. So since this concept of Allah is very alien and non-existent in the history of it in Japan. So just simply introduce this concept of Allah to the Japanese people. So they realize because they cannot go out from the this the world of G. 
but they in, uh, somehow close within this uh, power of gene. So they have to get out from this concept of gene or understanding or worshiping of gene and they to link to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. How first and foremost we have to introduce this new concept of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and which is written in the Quran only. That's why this verse has a special meaning for the Japanese people too. Invite to the way of the Lord with wisdom, uh, hikmah, and the good instruction, and the argue with them in the way that is best. So the hikmah, in generally, the most scholars mention this hikmah means the Quran and the Sunnah of the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, and especially for the Japanese context, yes, it is a Quran. The only the Quran can guide the Japanese people, it is not us to guide. It is only Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala open their heart and they guide. And we don't know which part of the Quran or area of the Quran will hit, will influence the impact of the certain Japanese people. So we let Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will guide them. And that's why our function, our role basically is just to convey, especially the Quran itself. So thank you for your listening. Alhamdulillah, thank you very much for your kind listening. Wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Wa alaikum salam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Masukimoto san, you can stay there because I think we will entertain those who would like to have some clarification. There is a lot of information that is definitely new for us tonight. For the first time, we will reveal about the understanding in the mind of the Japanese people when it comes to the belief in supernatural. Our challenge is for them to go beyond this creation to know the creator. Mm. That is the gap how to reach to the Japanese. The interesting bit is, is that you know that the Japanese has the traits that Islam encourage. Very organized, very punctual, very systematic, very respectful. So they have all the good Islamic behavior. The missing and the most important point is their belief. Yeah, the the tawhid, the mm -hmm. understanding. So I think tonight, from what you have shared with us, and I just want to enlighten us. How is it that we can approach the Japanese in a way that they can understand it logically mm. without imposing that Quran is wahi and by the Nubuwa prophet? Probably that can help because our people from Shah Alam, they are surrounded by Japanese people, good Japanese, because they have factories and production here. Big Bondori, Bon Odori festival is held in Shah Alam also. So again, this is an opportunity for Dawah. So I'm asking the first question. I'm sorry to take that opportunity. And then we'll open question to the others. Okay, so, so the approach uh, for the Dawah approach to Japanese people probably uh, takes many forms. However, through my experience, um, how I embraced Islam, how I was attracted to Islam through uh, human interaction, the bonding, the human relationship. So when I uh, just second year of university student, I encounter uh, the student, international student from Bangladesh, and we just made friendship. Um, just because simply he could not understand Japanese and he needs some help. I also want to practice English, so make friendship. Just we talk, you know, English and uh, just we have just casual relationship. One day, he invited me to visit his own hometown. He wants to just return for uh, just a one week or ten days. So he invited me. Okay, can you? Do you want to accompany with me? So okay. So just I'm just interested, you know, knowing other cultures because since my major is a culture anthropology or ethnography. 
to know other cultures. So I just accompanied with him. However, it was 1996. So the poverty were everywhere. Even I just arrived at the airport, all the beggars uh, surrounded me. And even the, on the street, there are lots of street children that are sleeping there. No housing, no education, no health. So I was shocked. And the shocking part is that I was thinking, why this situation and the so-called, uh, let's say, the prosperity or richness in terms of economy, however, in Japan coexist simultaneously. I couldn't figure out because some people are simply born in Bangladesh and they are poor. Some people are born simply in Japan. Somehow they are secured in terms of education, health, and so on. What is injustice? So from the beginning, you are in, in, in equal. From the, side, from the beginning, there is a huge gap. Some are born in the very good country, some are in very poor country. So if we are only focusing on this dunya, this life, you cannot justify this life. So I feel that this is meaningless. This life is meaningless. Then while I'm just thinking like this question, I interact with uh, my friends, family, the relatives. He has a very big uh, network. I was all surprised how they, he maintained the human relations with the families and relatives. I visit his hometown, the village. The people are very nice. Even they saw the, the foreigners first time. Uh, they are very welcoming. And I was thinking, why? Uh, they are not losing any hope. Like they have more energy than the like normal Japanese student uh, whose eyes are not really living. But these children or youngsters, they, they are like, I don't know, busy for survival. They are living, they're energetic. I, I was thinking why? So I come to Japan and access to the teaching of Islam because I know they are more Muslims. So there may be something to do with Islamic teaching or not. So I found the Quran and the Quran uh, revealed to me this, uh, the concept of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and the concept of the Akhirah, the life after death. And after I read this, uh, all details of about Akhirah, then all oh, give me the answer of the first question. How this injustice of this life can be resolved. Because each people has its own test. It doesn't matter whether where we born. Uh, or how much we get. It's all tests. And each individual has a different tests. And this can be justified in front of Allah's mother in the day of judgment. So it's no problem. So it gives the answer and the justice is true justice in life. That's why I feel very satisfied with this Quranic answer. And also, uh, this uh, clear concept of Allah's mother, the God, I never believe that there is a definition of God. As you can see, the people in Japan, they only know the genes. There is no clear definition. Even I talk about this is a thousand of years ago. Now people forget. Even I should search and research for years to understand what the belief, ancient belief, original belief of Japanese people actually. So then most of people don't know, not only the, I, I, in front of me, but I think most of the Japanese people do not know what I presented today. So that's why I was so surprised that there is a concept of and the definition of God. So that also uh, really giving me a wake up. So after reading the Quran for more details about uh, a year, and I was searching for if any, any mistakes, or any strange teachings or uh, difficult uh, teachings uh, to understand, I couldn't find anything. So I was thinking, thinking, and then finally just I said to my friend, so just I want to practice this is not what will happen. Because just reading the book, the Quran, doesn't change me much. So what happened? What would happen if I this, uh, practice Islam and what kind of internal change may happen. 
So that's why I just I decided myself to just go for invest in Islam. So they did MSA, that's Muslim Student Association in university. So they welcoming me and I made Shahada. So that is the kind of the uh, part of the answer to your question. Uh, so the first uh, people do not know, do not access to the Quran, the Islamic information itself, but they access the Muslim first. And then they look at the certain behaviors, certain values uh, from the behavior of the Muslim, then they will come to the original source, the Quran. So our function, the role is first we connect with Japanese people with the generosity, hospitality, or good akhla, whatever, any means, just simple um, business relationship is fine, just friendship is fine, but uh, we, we see uh, we have to keep relationship and eventually if Allah guides, uh, this person will access to the information of Islam, the knowledge of Islam by himself or by herself eventually, inshallah. Um, so I think I hope I answer your question. Okay, Jazakallah khair. I mean, that's a personal experience. Uh, brothers and sisters, we have part one of our session. We still have part two in our, before we end the session, which is the, but because the session now is for a question and answer, I still would like to open. Yes, brother, you can ask the question through the mic. Brother is in front. There's the a mic in front. Uh, for sisters is behind, but ah, no, brother is in front. Yeah, it's okay. Mm. It's already okay. Hello. Okay, can you hear right? Can you introduce yourself? Okay. Uh, hello. Assalamualaikum. My name is Ashraf. I'm from Subang Jaya. Uh, so thank you for the slide just now uh, for introducing the culture from Japanese. Uh, I just know all of the, uh, much of the Japanese culture today. Okay, so um, I I quite often come to comparative religion classes. They compare Islam and Christian. And uh, Hindu and other religion. Okay. And what I saw from your slide and your content is you are, you are using approach of similarity of Shintoism and also Islam. What the similarity uh, to do that one, uh, to do that one for the Japanese people. Okay. But just want to know your opinion. Is it good if we find um, differences rather than similarity to do da'wah. For example, Islam, we have good things and then other religions, uh, they are bad, for example. And then is it effective doing that so rather than finding similarities uh, in the perspective of Japanese uh, society, Japanese uh, perspective? Yeah. Okay. <clears throat> so basically, uh, you are saying the approach of da'wah to the Japanese people uh, not, not focusing on the similarities, but rather focus on differences, okay? But uh, we have to be very careful uh, when it comes to the differences. Uh, you cannot judge other religions from your own perspective, and they, certainly you cannot say they are bad. We have to avoid this word. Yeah, they have their own, uh, what do you call it, the pride and respect, yeah? So at least what I have done today is not simply similarities. The rather, I'd like to allocate, I mean, how we can allocate the concept of God within the framework of Islamic teachings, okay? That's why I show you this, this one, okay? How we can understand, it's not just similarities. How we understand from Islam perspective, the location of their God, the concept of God, to understand, you know? to how we can approach if we are not have, uh, let's say, the clear definition of what the word we use, yes? So what they use the word God, our, the word terminology, the God, is different. So from the beginning, we have to clarify which God we are talking about, yes? So that is a kind of first the approach. So that's why this is a, a kind of very small sharing, a humble sharing. 
So today I just share with you that from Muslim or Islam perspective, the Shinto gods located as a jinn. Okay, is not allowed, of course. Yes, so it's very clear now. Yeah. So uh, based on this, having said that, having said that, uh, uh, it's not just simple similarities, because uh, as I mentioned at the beginning, uh, in Japanese uh, there is only only two million Christians, right? So it's not a country of Ahrekta, not people of book. So unlike uh, Muslim approach to the Christianity or Judaism. Okay, they, they just directly go to similarities to the concept of God. We cannot do it in the Japanese context. context. We cannot because definition itself is different. Yeah, that's why our approach is different. Rather, we go to just simple similarities after we understand how the jinn and the Allah, the relationship, how God or monotheism uh, policy is different, then we just simply, simply introduce this entirely new concept of God in Islam, that is Allah. Because it's alien to the Japanese context. Look, no relation. Yes, Allah and Jin completely different, right? So just simply introduce who is Allah. That is sufficient. And the most of the Japanese people do not know who is Allah. So it's much more easy, do you think? Talking with the Christians, it's much more easy to talk to Japanese because just you, you know about Allah, then just introduce who is Allah. No need to compare or no need to introduce, I mean, uh, other culture. I hope answer your question. <laughs> there is a question from online in the Zoom. So we'll entertain this question. Is there, is, the question is uh, by someone from Pakistan, Pakistan Malik. Is there any concept of purgatory in Shintoism? Okay. Is, is there any concept of purgatory in Shintoism? If yes, then kindly explain. This is from Rabi Ahina from Pakistan. And the meaning of purgatory is a place or state of suffering inhabited by the soul of sinners who are expited their sin before they go to heaven. Or oh, this is cleansing or purifying. Okay. Is, there a, is this concept available in Shintoism or not? Okay. This uh, uh, cleansing or purifying. Okay, yeah, that, that's the thing. Okay. Is it? Yeah, okay, so, okay. So is there any concept of cleansing, right? I mean, in terms of the sins, uh, purifying from the sins, and impurities. Yes, Shintoism, they have that concept. That's why when you look at this uh, Chinova, this uh, ring, remember this, uh, this ring, this ring, actually, why they are passing through this ring? You know, as if that they renew the skin of the snake after through passing this Chinova symbolizing snake body, uh, they feel it's a renew, they, impure, they a purify renew. their sins and their impurities. So certainly, certainly uh, in Shinto, they have a concept of the so-called purities, and then they, I mean, as a human being, they, they really want to purify themselves. It's something natural. But the, the most of the difference. Yes, yeah. yes, yes. Okay, one brother there, and second one. So maybe you can ask the question together, and then we listen to both questions. Uh, no sound. No sound. Stand on the mic. Yes, my name is Azmi. Uh, from Tanjung Malik. Okay. Uh, my question is on Burakumin status in Shintoism. Oh. Is okay. it okay? Okay. So he wants to know about Burakumin. Yeah, okay. Uh, it's uh, like uh, Burakumin is like a uh, mm, uh, discriminated uh, class of people long ago. Caste, caste. Caste, kind of yeah. caste. Uh, 
And in Shintoism, I have no uh, study background on that topic. So I think, yeah, because it's not relevant to this topic too. So I'm sorry about that. <laughs> okay. All right. Thanks, brother. Hopefully, you can ask me uh, some relevant topic uh, today's uh, presentation. Assalamu alaikum. Uh, is there any connection between the Shintoism and the rising sun? Okay, yes. And what more? Sure. Uh, what is the difference between the Kaizen and Zen Garden? Okay, Kaizen? Garden. Zen Garden. Zen, Zen Garden, yes. And Kaizen and Zen Garden. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay, thank you. Okay. So, okay, first question is about the worshiping the God of Sun. Okay, so this also, I think, the kid coming from the Egypt, the Egyptian also, they worship the, the Sun. Okay, and even in Japan, when I'm studying this, uh, the original root of the Shinto's belief, I came across the belief of the sun. Uh, it's a long time ago. It's linked to the uh, uh, the sun worship, sun worship, and the snakes are coming from the sun, and they both male and females, and they change their forms, transform their, their form into humans. We call amateurs. So I think there is a, a relationship between the sun worship. And the snake worship, and the certain this uh, Shin, Shinto's faith. Uh, I, I I cannot I cannot refer any references, but uh, I'm sure there is relationship in China. So, uh, for the second question, second question uh, about Kaizen and then Zen, Zen Zen Buddhism. Or you're talking about Zen Garden? Did you say Zen Garden? Yes. Yeah. So. Kaizen is just simply means is the improvement, just uh, from the uh, negative or some inferior status or condition to the better one, better condition. Okay. So, but Zen, in terms of the garden, is using different kanji, different Chinese character. This Zen is uh, related with uh, the Buddhism uh, faith. Uh, it's more related with, uh, I think, this uh, uh, the spirituality, the spirituality of their uh, calmness, and uh, I think the the the, the, the uh, meaning of life, uh, connection with the nature. I think so. Both are completely different, different concept. High Zen, different kanji. Zen garden, different. Also, the sound is same Zen. Okay, I hope answer your question. Yeah, thank you. I just leave one more question for the sister because after this we're going to talk about the project. Uh, inshallah, nine thirty we will just. Yeah. Okay, sister. Assalamualaikum. My name is Anisa. Uh, I would like to know yeah, what I'm is um, the creator. Yeah, in Japanese, yeah. what is the word creator in Japanese? And would it help if you use yeah, okay. that word instead of the word God? Okay. Since it's confusing. Okay. Thank you. Uh, so, creator is the soul worship. So, this is a uh, oh, sorry. Yes, so this is a creator. Uh, like in the Christian, Christian use this term. They also use the term creator. Creator. So it's a more general term. Sozo uh, shu. In Japanese, sound the reading says sozo shu. Sozo shu is a creator. So the rab in Arabic, rab. Did I answer your question? So the question is, can you use this terminology yeah. when you discuss with? Ah, okay, yes, yes, yeah, can, can, yes, with much more focus, yes, in not confusing with Soko Shinto gods. Yes. Yeah. Okay, brother, we still have yeah five more minutes, so go ahead. Assalamualaikum, Tuan Haji Koichiro. I'm very happy to come over here because my brother Daniel invited me. Uh, I actually got extra ammunition bullet 
from your from your slide. Very very useful. I really really thank you. But uh, normally, what I start with my dakwa to personalize uh, the people. Uh, I always talk about the jinn, Satan. Um, <laughs> if you realize the Bible, the Bible, you can Google Revelation chapter twelve verse nine. It says in the Bible. I always uh, start with this to my dakwa. I read to you the Bible, Revelation chapter twelve verse nine. And the great dragon was thrown down, and the serpent, snake, nah? and the serpent of old, who is called the devil, and Satan, who deceives the whole world, he was thrown down to the earth, and his angels were thrown down with him. It's in the Bible, mm. so it's very, very good. Uh, 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 to to actually give. Uh, uh, how is it to convince people based on one of the Bible scriptures also Revelation chapter twelve verse nine? I repeat, and the great dragon was thrown down, the serpent of old, who is called the devil and Satan, who deceives the whole world. He was thrown down to earth, and his angels were thrown down with him. This is Kitab. So you are making a statement, not a question. Is there any question? Oh, thank you very much. Zakallah <laughs> brother. Yeah, quickly then, uh, because. Okay, well, go ahead, brother. Your natural voice without any support for amplifier. Waalaikum salam wa rahmatullahi. Hmm. Akhira. Hmm. Okay, so the uh, you know, concept of the after, after, after death in, in Japan, uh, yeah, of course, uh, it's influenced by many teachings historically. And the previously, long time ago, Japanese people also believe uh, after, after death. But during the time, like, um, uh, I think about a thousand years ago, uh, during like samurais, they are fighting each other a lot. So they become more pragmatic. They are more dunya oriented because they are only hoping for the uh, akhira in nothing change the situation. That's why their focus is more and more dunya. And then eventually today is even the single second they are not thinking about akhira. Even say one, one, one second, I say. Because my, myself, I was so, uh, even people not not taught the teaching of Akhira. That's why only dunya, cycle of dunya. Okay, when it comes to uh, uh, life after death, uh, many people believe the kind of, uh, 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 what do you call it? Rebirth, uh, uh, rebirth. Okay, so it's a Buddhism thinking. So their, their soul is somehow uh, living, not die. And then when they die, and then they transform into like other animals or other plants, or maybe humans, if they are good, you know, in this oh, life, again, they can born as a humans. So this is a kind of the life circulation because they observe the nature, unlike Sakura tree, right? So every spring, Sakura bloom, right? Next year also same, next year also again and again. So people are thinking, oh, our life also same. So after we die, like a sakura, we also like, you know, live again, but different forms. So that is a kind of belief, not one way, not one way. Yeah. But that, yeah, that is a kind of uh, Buddhism, I think Buddhism, yeah, way of thinking. The Shinto is not talking about so much on Akhir, I think. I hope I can answer your question. So, so it's an, a side question. Is that why commit suicide mm. amongst the Japanese mm. is because that they want to re regenerate to a different form? So why is it so common? Uh, it's okay to do commit suicide. Yeah, uh, that is uh, probably because of social uh, environment and the probably the social pressure also. In Japan, the social conformity is very strong. Social conformity means the sameness. After everybody like the same. So if different is very like uh, feel pressure. 
So if uh, someone, because due to the economic crisis, or let's say family crisis, they cannot live like other people live, right? right. So they become like uh, inferior, and they feel like uh, uh, disappointed. They are like, they cannot be same like others. So they feel uh, uh, so-called depressed. And they, if they cannot find any means to overcome their legal challenges, then they commit suicide. Because I think the social component is very strong, the one, one way. That's why even the, those who are like the, the foreign immigrants came to Japan, they also start commit suicide. Oh, because the environment is giving pressure. Yeah, influence. Yeah. How important is environment? Environment, yeah. Mm -hmm. I don't know whether right to share the information or not, but I, one of the sister from America, America, just embraced Islam. When I just right. embraced Islam recently, just after three years ago, uh, his brother married with Japanese. And just, I think, last year or this year, uh, he committed suicide. He, he was a Jew. He was a Jew. And then, yes, and then this, uh, the American sister, he was Islam, uh, very regretted. Why she, she didn't, you know, do dawah to him strongly. Yeah. Uh, it means, you know, he, he was so influenced by the Japanese culture. He's from America. Okay, I think it's now for us to move on to the next, I think, uh, because we still have one more item to inform and address to the audience. It's about this project yes. that you have initiated, uh, Alhamdulillah. So, um, so maybe we can start something of why do you want to embark on this project and um, how we will then highlight to you 